when planning a shoot, I don't think much about where it will take place. The model is more important to me, and today I'm shooting in the workshop of the Queen of Mirrors. As a matter of fact, she is in the frame. The girl is bright, with a type appearance, with her own skin nuances and, what I like most of all, absolutely non-Bohemian, a normal Russian woman, with a great creative charisma and her own style. The perfect heroine for the episode is 217. BMR's cream serum helped moisturize and smooth the skin, and judging by the relief, Max Factor's mattifying base came in quite handy. Dense tone is not an option. A lightweight fluid from Chanel with a drop of fixing gel from Pericon MD create the perfect velvety surface, evening out the underlying skin undertone. You can, of course, go heavy on the theatrical stage techniques with a good multi-pass including sponge, spray, blotting with a puff, etc. But in this case, a simple solution is both better and more practical. Same goes for working out the nuances. I use Armani Corrector to cover details and lighten the center of the face with very careful blending. It is important for me to keep naturalness and balance between the illusion of makeup and real life. The application of powder is necessary as it visually softens nuances and minor relief. And the product from Romanova is gorgeous, as always. Now, applying classic blush is a good idea as an extra, say, powdery skin fixation never hurts, but the color from Estee Lauder is quite natural and knowing that the next step is a sculpting powder that creates a final play of light and shadow, I opt for the Estrade palette. It's important to remember that the use of all kinds of visual illusions should be careful and very light, so as not to fall into a kind of theatricality. To be honest, it didn't take me long to figure out which accent would be the main focus of this makeup look. There are types, when intuitively, your hands do all the work themselves. I mixed Max Factor's long-lasting matte lipstick and added a little red lipstick from Pro Makeup Lab to soften the intensity of the dark color and then a slow and very detailed application. The choice of the pencil shade from Romanova is dictated by the gray-green eye color, it is correct, and according to Ethan's theory and color harmony, Especially, I did not use the base on my eyelids. And the resistant pencil will serve as a good liner. The main thing is to quickly blend to apply the shadows from Chanel on the still wet surface. The satin texture locks the pencil in place perfectly, creating a beautiful long-lasting effect. The eyes are deep set, and therefore the main intensity of the color should be along the contour, in the borders between the lashes. Drawing of Kajal made almost on automatic, and to soften the volume of the upper eyelid, I perform my traditional haze. Here it is important not to go deep, but only to create a light anti-gravity illusion. Before the shoot, I had planned some kind of multi-trick with eyebrow work, but as the play progressed, I decided to slightly correct the shape and fix the eyebrows with spray. Both products are from Max Factor. Intensive coloring of eyelashes with mascara from Dior is necessary to visually transfer the accent and distract attention from the depth of the eyelid crease. Lip gloss perfectly increases volume, but exposes the definition. And in this case, I prefer a matte effect, for the same reason I don't use a spray, as a light shine can emphasize the relief of the skin, so the wet effect is a bit out of place. But to lighten the depth of the eyelid crease is a different story. I use Rilui liquid shadows and apply very spot on on the movable eyelid without going above the crease, because it can emphasize gravity, which is something I try to avoid with haze. So always consider individual nuances when choosing your makeup. Good luck and beautiful makeup looks to you.